connect to the youth through the media. So um, there's me, I'm Nicole. So like I do graphics and animation and like sometimes like touch on the like um, uh, some of the video side of stuff for us and Marcus is the video guy. So like, yeah, we'll just give you a presentation on what, you know, what um, more of what we do. And yeah, give me a second. Then I'll share the screen in a minute. All right, are you guys able to see like the slides? All right, okay, so let's start. So um, we'll be talking about um, developing media content to reach the youths. So firstly, media ex youths. Youths are you know media savvy, especially social media savvy. It's like another language that we speak of in the, in the 21st century, and we are only going to go deeper into it in the future, in the coming months, in the coming years. And it might sound like new territory, but it's not something to be afraid of, but it's something that we can use to our advantage to reach out um, to the people uh, uh, in that space. Yeah, so media and use. So firstly, I'll start with this. I'll, I've categorized our points into some questions here and there, and like we'll just um, go ahead with this first. So where should your media content go? In the social media spaces are some of these. So website, a website is like one of our main, uh, it's like our main um, mothership body, you know, kind of thing. And then we also have like Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, where we post our newsletters and stuff. And our Instagram page, which is like one of our very, very um, main ones that we'll be focusing on uh, during this session. Yeah. So um, because it's, uh, we find that it's really one of the most effective of all uh, social media platforms. And it's also the most convenient for youth to access because the reach is huge and almost everyone has it. Like even secondary school students like you know even the, the 20 range the millennial range even like some of the 30 you know the 30 range people are using instagram and it's really really um it really has a very big reach yeah so before going into the details of how to design and create um content this is something that we need to understand first this is the nature of instagram it's you know very instant like scrolling from one post to the next in less than a second so um, I would just call the first section, you know, the, the one that says grab attention. Uh, now that's called the first net. So that's how we um, just hook people into the post, like uh, as, as soon as they see it. So um, the image and the first sentence of the caption, that's where, that's where the first net is. And for the second net, building anticipation, it's like, you know, you want to go make your readers, your audience go like, oh, no, I want to read more of this. And the third net, which is the call to action, which is um, what you want your audience to do after that. I think just now you guys uh, shared in the comments that you really want to reach this um, third, third, uh, third net where you want to um, get people to share your stuff, comment on your stuff. And so, yeah, so like um, uh, this workshop will be explaining more on that. And not, but the thing is not to worry about be, not being able to catch people all the way into the third net because even though that's what we all want, like this is normal Instagram user behavior and something that's out of our control. And what I mean by that is like, you know, we usually can get the bulk of the audience and in the first, in the first net, the grab attention and then like a, a, a lesser number of people will get into the building anticipation phase and a le even lesser number of people will go into the call to action, but that is normal Instagram user behavior. So naturally, um, uh, so what we can do is naturally the wider our first net is, like our first base is, the more people will fall into the third net. So we'll be talking about how to widen the first net and the second net, how to expand your base. So three very, very, very important things to know is your target audience, your art direction, and your messaging. And I'll like elaborate more in, um, um, on these three posts. And these are really, this is like the holy trinity of all the social media stuff. Like um, it puts the social and the social media. Yeah. All right. So moving on to target audience. These are the people that you really want to reach. And in order to reach them, you have to have to have to understand them and uh, so for example things are like age group like uh, what what are you reaching out to like you know the younger the younger younger gen z's you know like the secondary school kids or are you reaching out to the millennials um, uh, then you have to consider their gender their interests and perhaps what kind of roles do they play 
And these things are very important because it determines how your audience is going to consume your content. And like how a 12-year-old consumes content is very, very different from how a 25-year-old consumes content. And uh, I think a lot of you guys are ministry leaders as well, youth pastors and, and things like that. Um, so uh, sometimes you have to consider whether your media content, are they angled towards believers or not? Because this is important because if your page is focusing more on discipleship, then your main, and your main, then your main audience would already be believers. And then you've got to cater your content towards the believers. However, if your, um, uh, your main target audience is you know, more, perhaps more of the unbelievers or newer ones, then your content would have to be more evangelism friendly. Like you're using less Christian jargon and things that are more relatable to the everyday person. Like so, for example, like um, uh, like a, a Joanne shared just now, like relationships are a very, very, very big one, especially for youths. Yeah, so moving on to the things. So these are some things that we have to consider. Like what are they interested in? Like when do they surf, surf the platform? So for example, like, you know, a, a school kid will surf Instagram or like a social media platforms, perhaps, you know, before they go to school or on the way to school or after their lesson, say around 1 p.m. or stuff. So you will know that is actually the best time to post your content. So like, you know, let's say they are released from school, the first post that they will see, the freshest post will be that, that article, let's say, or like, you know, your post on student life, for example. Yeah, so, you know, it makes it very relevant. The timing is really quite important. And also, um, you've got to consider why would your audience want to consume your content and how do they consume your content. Yeah, and also, like, moving um, more, more, for more points, it's like, you know, what kind of content would inspire my audience and what kind of visuals will attract or work for my target audience? And can your audience recognize, you know, your ministry, your church, your visual, just by, uh, your brand just by your visuals? And just, uh, and to explain more on that, we'll talk about art direction. Because I think some of you guys um, also shared about uh, how to, like, if you don't really have a designer, then how are you going to do things? So these are some of the basic things you can consider when um, making an Instagram page or ministry page or things. Yeah, but before, like, you know, I go into it, like, let's just play a small game called Identify the Brand. So you can, like, you know, just type it in the chat and, like, uh, okay, let's just start. Which, what brand do you think this is? Google, oh, you guys are fast. You guys are super fast. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, this is the next one. You gotta go to the next one. Give me a second. All right. Oh, okay, you guys are solid. You're super solid Instagram. It's like, you're so recognizable, right? Okay, the third one, come on. Ikea, 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 like, you know, depending on how you're gonna pronounce it, but that, <laughs> yes, it's Ikea. Yeah, and I think you know, this, it really drives the point because like, you know, like um, of art direction, because like you know, immediately we, uh, when you guys see this, you know, even though it's not the brand per se, but you know, you recognize the colors, you recognize like, you know, the shapes that they use, you recognize the gradient, you know, for example, like this Instagram one, and it's just so recognizable that, and, and this is something that we can learn from them. Like, hey, you know, like immediately when you see like, you know, this, then people will immediately relate it to your ministry which can be very very useful in the social media space as well so there's um so three important factors to consider for design are your color scheme so like uh i would say like for example thirst you know our color scheme is just very yellow you know like yellow like um that's just our brand color so perhaps when you're making a page like a instagram page or facebook page you can uh you can like check out your church's color scheme you know what are your corporate colors which um, will help to fit into this brand identity as well. And font choice, uh, like what kind of fonts do you guys use? Because, you know, um, different kind of fonts will have a different kind of feeling, you know, like something curly and like funny and like big and spunky will like, you know, evoke that kind of emotion rather than, and like, you know, a more formal looking font, like, you know, with all those um, serifs will look more formal. Yeah. So like, um, there's things that we can consider to like, you know, build up that brand image. And also for the vibe and filters, like, um, for example, you know, thirst is very like, you know, bright and like, you know, excitable and like things like that. So like, that's, that's um, how we want to uh, um, 
present ourselves to our audience. So like perhaps if your pitch is like, you know, more formal or if your pitch is more catered to, let's say, females or males, then, you know, you can consider this kind of thing. So what kind of vibe do you want to give uh, your pitch? So all these things, um, like, you know, we run through the art direction in the previous few slides and this, all this ties in to how to maintain a a, co a cohesive Instagram feed. It comes hand in hand. So maintaining a cohesive feed is very important because it's the first thing um, people are going to see when they click into your page. And usually people will click onto the most interesting small thumb thumbnail there is as well. So some tips for a great feed, like what is your feed aesthetic? What, what, um, and then you have to create visual balance and you know, we have to consider the timing of our posts as well. I'll give you guys more info on this. So how do you want your overall feed to look like? You know, when you see all those tiny boxes, like when people click into your page, is it bright and airy? Is it you know, emo? Is it moody? Like, does it follow some sort of pattern? And choosing the same kind of filter or the same kind of color schemes or you know, editing rules will help your photos and your page look consistent and fit together. So you know, it doesn't look like this post is suddenly out of place or like, you know, um, yeah, like just keeping consistency is really quite important as well. And uh, you gotta think about how your posts look like next to each other and make sure it's not too busy, too cluttered and uh, see what it looks like as a whole. And for timing, um, you consider user behavior. And this is what we have found to do quite well. Like for normal or generic kind of post, 9 p.m., like every day, 9 p.m. is the best time to post this kind of thing. Because probably it's after dinner, you know, people are chilling. So like, you know, using Instagram. So uh, that's where your, uh, it's good for like post to go out. How, and however, if it's news-ish news kind of um, articles, for example, like GE or COVID, like, you know, like national level stuff, it's good to go out at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Because that's also when, like, you know, the TV will show that kind of news. So, you know, after people watch the TV, watch, like, you know, whatever news is breaking, then they will probably go online and, like, hey, you know, is there anyone talking about this? And then that's where your post comes in and then you just get, you know, people into that first net. And for students, like, like just now we have said, is um, around 8 a.m. because that's when you know they are tra probably traveling to school or like um, before that and then uh, around 1 p.m. ish like that's when they release from school and for church related stuff like perhaps you might want to um, post like uh, let's say if you have a ministry update or things like that you might want to post it let's say before the weekend comes because you know the weekend is probably where most of these things will take place but also if you want to post like you know um let's say sermon related stuff like you know a sermon uh let's say recap or things like that a uh, 12 p.m on sundays are really quite good or like uh because you know that's fresh out of the service so like you know when people click into their um uh, social media feeds like you know right after the service that's that will be the first thing that they see yeah, and but, but perhaps other than this, like um, you could have a series kind of thing as well. So for example, every Monday you post an encouragement because you know, you know, the start of the week, people are like, oh, sien. Like, so people are like, oh no, we have to go to work. Oh no, we have to go to school. That's, that's why um, an encouraging post will probably do well on a Monday rather than the rest of the days. And Perhaps every Thursday, because you know it's also in the midweek, like you know the energy level sort of dips. You perhaps you could have a testimony kind of post every Thursday, like let's say 9 p.m. or whatever timing you want to put it at. Because you know that would be something that can encourage and spur someone on. And yeah. So for example, like looking at the thirst feed aesthetic, you know, these three images on the screen were taken from three different timelines. So one of it is mid the middle of last year, one of it is early and one is recent. So you guys can sort of tell there's a more or less consistent bold, color, bold and strong color palette to keep it zesty and fresh and also to grab attention. So we also have three different designers with three very, very, very different styles. So in order to keep it consistent, that's where the art direction comes in. We use a similar, well, we use similar kinds of colors. When, when we do text posts, we use similar kind of fonts and like, um, and that's where your brand guide sort of comes in. So like, you know, even though there are like multiple designers, like we still, um, you know, fit in somewhat the same, we use the same kind of template, if you would say. And for visual balance, um, also 
uh, we also alternate uh, between text and image for each post. So like, you know, when you click into our page, you'll just see like there's an image and a text and an image and a text. So like, you know, it doesn't, we try to avoid overlapping and this um, can help a lot in your, to help balance your feed out. And also do try to avoid um, similar looking posts from being posted side to side. So for example, if you release uh, maybe a blue colored um, visual, like you try for your, for your next post, try not to go blue. You just try to go, uh, let's say red or yellow or like, you know, so another kind of color so that when, so like maybe people won't think it's the same post because, you know, sometimes you might think it's a repost or like, you know, a double kind of post or uh, regarding the same topic and that, um, you know, um, and if it happens too many times, let's say like it's green, 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 and then people might get bored of it. So like, yeah, just try to mix up your post as much as you can. So we'll be going into the kinds of posts and like what does really well for like each kind of thing. So for example, uh, the first one would be photo carousel. So this does very, very well for posts that contain a lot of information, breaking it down to bite-sized pieces because, you know, people don't really like to click in to read, like, you know. I remember the, the diagram, like this is part of the first net where you grab attention. So like, you know, with the headline and all, then people will just swipe. Rather than like, because the second net um, deals with, uh, in anticipation, and this will help to feed into the second net as well. Yeah, so yeah, if you have a lot of information, go for the photo carousel. And then second, there's hand lettering. Like, people love, like, short, encouraging quotes written in a pretty manner. You know, whether you're Christian, you're non-Christian, everyone loves a pretty quote, you know, like, you print out on your, you know, your phone wallpaper and stuff like that. And this is also very, very, very easy to send to friends. You know, it's very non-threatening, there's nothing preachy about it. And so, uh, you can use it in a form, as a form of, you know, evangelism, like, you know, your friend is going through a not-so-good day, and then you can just send them a nice, pretty quote, encouraging quote, whether they're Christian or not, I think they will appreciate it. A lot of Instagram pages use this tactic as well. <laughs> you know, whether like, you know, they're putting verses or other, other things, but yeah, this is good. The third kind of post is the photo kind of post. So um, this will work really well for like things that are news related. For example, like GE, the GE or COVID or addresses by the government. And it also really works well for interviews where, you know, you're putting a person's where putting a person's face would make it more relatable to the viewers. So for example, for you guys, perhaps it might be a testimony video, you know, or, test, or, or, or like, you know, you're, so you want to share a testimony. It's good to like, you know, put the person there to, the person's image there so that um, people find it more relatable. Like, hey, this is a real story, you know, that kind of thing. And it's also good when, um, uh, it's also good to use profiles when the person speaking is well known, like let's say Ravi Zacharias or like various pastors here and there, or maybe a youth leader if it's you know a more internal or within you know your church kind of um, thing. And also photos are very useful if you don't have a design resource or don't have a designer. And you know I think um, here are some websites that you can go to to get some pretty good stock images. Um, actually, it's in the it's in the um, speaker notes and you guys will receive like the the slides later so you can just like take a look at it so but like I'll just like say some of them like um, there's unsplash.com u-n-s-p-l-a-s-h unsplash.com then there's pexels p-e-x-e-l-s dot com and pixabay p-i-x-a-b-a-y dot com so these are where you go to to get your stock images. But if you want something more designy, a bit more aesthetic, you could go to like um this place called uh, canva.com. So they have like, you know, some templates here and there which you can help you if you do not have like a design team. Yeah. And all right, moving on to the next. There's also illustrations. Um, and this work best, you know, when we... Uh, when a more abstract or emotive topic is discussed, like, you know, dreams or prophecies, and it brings a different kind of element um, from a photo. So stock photos, if you think about it, you know, they are kind of limited as well. You know, oh, the girl, like a girl, the back view, the boy, the front view, like uh, flowers, sea, mountain, trees. And, you know, like people can get like bored if you just keep posting these kind of things over and over and over again. Because, and, and, and also sometimes you don't really have the exact image that you need 
that properly conveys the message of your article or your post. And that's where illustrations come in very handy. So uh, illustrations or collage can really help in this case to communicate something that a photo can't. Like for example, or you want to draw someone walking on water, you know, like a, perhaps an illustration of that might work better than a photo of someone actually trying to walk on water, you know, <laughs> or like, you know, drawing a person in a giant hand or giant plants or like, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, God, let's say, protecting your household, like how are you going to convey that through a photo? But in, for an illustration, perhaps it could be like, oh, wings covering a house, you know, something like that. Yeah, citrus things so. though. And also not to forget our IGTV. Um, because IGTV, it's kind of an unused function on Instagram at the moment, but it's really very, very useful. So do take note. Um, uh, because you know, it's just a, a, a new form of media, a new form of like, you know, how we can um, use Instagram. So, but, so I think people are somewhat still a bit wary of it, but you know, just try it out. Just try it out. Because like, you know, in future, this is going to be part of like, um, uh, what, what you're going to leave uh, behind on your page. I don't really leave behind, but you know, it's just some, something that people can look at. So for example, your ministry videos, like your your pro your 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 church you know promo videos and stuff, you can just put it all on on, on IGTV. Yeah, uh, but uh, also do take note, you can you don't always have to go for you know the 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 the, 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 the vertical style kind of video, but you can just do your normal horizontal kind because you know when you upload it will be posted as a vertical kind but I mean that's just just some things uh, okay like um maybe a better way to how do I explain this like properly it, all you have to do is like just create um a square or vertical thumbnail for it and like it will just post normally so you don't really have to worry about rotation and things like that it will appear quite normal and also yes insta story you could use this to put out visual freebies like wallpapers or you know for ministry updates and things like that like you know your 24 things that can be like you know posted um as a temporary kind of uh thing like you know you just have to um put it up there for like let's say 24 hours for example on a friday you want to put like hey you know guys be excited for service you know comment below and like you know tell people how excited you are for service and it's um uh, you and there's also this uh a question and answer function that it has and it's written it makes it makes it very interactive so i i think it it can get quite exciting when you know people reply to your stories your church posts and then you can just go and you just just try to repost so that you know people know that hey you're in you are you know engaging with them and also last but not least there's um this is, this is, I don't know whether you guys know about this, but you can actually change your Instagram to, um, from a normal account to a business account under your settings. And this will, um, and then you will be able to see the insights on your posts. Like, you know, who's liking it, who's saving it, what, what is their age group, what is their gender. Like, I mean, they won't exactly tell you the name or the person account. So it's quite anonymous and quite safe. Um, yeah, but uh, it's really very useful if you need to see insights. Like you can just go to your settings, try it out, you know. And like, there's also this um, blue button if you can see uh, at the bottom right hand corner of each post that says promote. And this um, it will cost a few dollars, but it will reach a lot more people. And you don't have to boost every post, but perhaps you could do so for a post that you really, really want to get out there, like a good testimony, or you know, um a video that you really want people to see yeah it will just you know it will somewhat work as an ad but not exactly but you know it will just um, expand your reach so the third thing that um is very um important in social media is messaging um because this um says what you want to carry across to your audience like this is the purpose of base of why you are creating the content and putting it out there so you got to decide this first before you decide what graphic or what kind of caption you want to put out so, you know, what is the aim of your content? What do you want to leave them with? And what do you want them to do after consuming your message? So just for example, um, for you know, if you take a look at the diagram, grab attention, build anticipation, call to action. And an example would be this. Like, you know, if you know it's exam period now, and you know that your target audience might be struggling through certain things. So that's where you want to aim your content towards, to encourage the students out there. But so then, then um, because you know that perhaps you're struggling with this, an exam-related phrase or an image or a caption 
would catch their attention, you know, rather than like an image, uh, a nature type image with leaves or like flowers, because like, you know, that is what will capture the attention of your audience. And what do you want them to anticipate after looking at your first post? Like, do you want them to read the rest of your post or if you want them to swipe the photo carousel? Or, and, and then that's where you can put, you know, an encouragement based on a verse, perhaps a word of truth, like, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, that, hey, you know, God has a plan for you. And what do you want them to do after consuming the message? Do you want them to repost it, to comment it, or just have a personal takeaway? So like, you know, when you know your audience, that's where you can plan out all these kind of things. And also, how to write a good caption. So, some things to note that is that there's a 2,200 word limit. But, you know, I think no one will just, no one will just go um, so far. Lah. Like, you know, a post will definitely be shorter than that. And also, um, try to, um, try not to start with like, a, oh, you know, one day I was feeling sad. But perhaps try having been hurt before. You know, these two sentences are quite similar. But the second one will be a better hook. Like having been hurt before. Like people will be like, oh, so how has this person been hurt before? Like, oh, how, what, like, what made this person sad? You know, then they'll just click in. So that's what we call the anticipation. But also try not to mislead people or, you know, be clickbaity. And also add a disclaimer if necessary for like, you know, triggering topics like depression or abuse. Like, um... Things like that. Lah. This is some things that you would want to take note. And also, um, personal stories work um, a lot better than just informative updates. So what do I mean by that? Um, personal stories are things like you know testimonies or learning points or phrases um, uh, of encouragement. So there's some sort of takeaway. You know, people can like, you know, take this info and like, oh, I can use it for another day. I can use it when I do like my devotion. Uh, later in the day but you know sometimes um, uh, your page will have to function as, as a newsletter for church especially you know for very ministry based kind of things and people but I mean that the thing is that because of user behavior people will not consume it as much um, as a personal story kind of update because you know they are familiar with like the, the system they are familiar with like you know what's going to happen so like a post um, like, you know, all be excited for sale, you, you realize that only the leaders, you know, your youth leaders, your uh, other ones reposting this, you know, getting their members, you know, to like and comment, <laughs> you know, and things like that. So, uh, so because like all these are like what we consider like just information that, you know, people will just like just scroll through. So what I would recommend is try to add in both, especially if you are using Instagram for your ministry. So perhaps you could like, um, balance out the post like um with one information and then one like personal thing one information and one personal thing so to like you know get people to like you know generate that like you know uh that, that liking system or like you know um something like that and you also want to keep it relevant for both church members and non-believers so like you know the the perhaps like the the information on might might be for more for updates for your for your church members but the but the testimonies and stuff like that can be, you know, easily sent out to the to their friends or um, the, just the people on Instagram. Yeah. And also have a call to action. Yeah. And just then, this is my last point, creating graphics for sensitive topics. So this is something, sensitive sensitive topics are something we cannot avoid where we, in, when we are in the media industry or ministry where you occasionally have to talk about it. So for example, like politics or like, you know, LGBT or like um, race, you know, or things like that, like the racism thing that has been going around like recently or like, you know, that cancel culture thing that um, Jong was, uh, Joanne was talking about just now. And like, so how do we do this without, you know, offending people? So when we are doing graphics for such, we got to be very um, respectful of boundaries. So do your research to know what's okay and what's not okay. What colors to use, you know, what symbols like you shouldn't use. Like, um, and also um, how it overall, like how is it being portrayed as a graphic? So like, we do, like, like some no-nos are like no insults, no derogatory symbolism and things like that and we, it's also good to use an abstract or non-literal style when doing so so you know it's like there's like this um filter in a way so like people don't go full on offensive about it and um and we yeah, but yet you know we don't stay like you know neutral about the situation as well so yeah here are some examples and yeah with that 
I will also I will just pass the time on to Marcus and he will tell you guys more about um like how to do videos and yeah I'll pass the time on to you. Thank you guys. Hello, can everyone hear me? Nice. Thanks, Nicole. I'm gonna share my screen first a bit. Uh. You can see right. Very right, great. Uh, hi. So. My name is Marcus, I'm one half of the filmmaking team uh, in TUS. Uh, the other guy is not here today. <laughs> yeah, so today I'll be uh, focusing a lot on filmmaking, on uh, what we should and how we should in TUS. And I'll also be sharing a little bit on like the workflow, the stages of the whole production and like how we start from step one to step three. Uh, I won't, I'll be going into like the surface of it, so it won't really be in depth. But uh, I'll try my best to like be as detailed as I can. Lah. Yeah. So uh, going on, like the type of videos that we actually do, right? Uh, this few, which is music videos, narrative, short films, animations, and highlights. Yeah, uh, so these are just a few of many other possible, like many other possible like uh, genres or type of videos that you can actually do as a creative, you know. Uh, don't be limited by this few. You can actually do a lot. This is, these are just a few that we actually focus on because, uh, you know, like we, we get stories and then we get like, songs in so we just you know choose to focus on this yeah so you don't be limited by uh this few you know you you, are, you can be open to any other kind of videos uh. yeah so uh moving on right i'm gonna like uh not focus a lot on the animation expect but i'm gonna show you some few examples of uh you know like uh animated videos and videos uh combined with animation so like uh, i'm not sure some of you seen this before this few so we have a uh, a few videos in the past where we uh, get animations and videos to work together and all the, all the animations right um still done by Nico who just shared like uh some good stuff just now so as you can see on the top left video right it's fully animated uh so if you have time right you know you just go onto our uh Thirst website or like our YouTube channel right go look out for these videos right and you'll know right that uh animations right they play play a lot uh like in videos they add a lot of uh, substance they add a lot of like uh, wait to how good a video can be. So it's really, really important. Like if you have an animator friend, you have like someone who can actually draw, you know, like uh, work with them, you have the chance, like, you know, uh, yeah. So like, uh, don't be afraid if you can't like draw or like you can't really, uh, I don't know, you can't, like me, you, you can't really draw on the screen or something like that. Like I can't really draw myself. So like, don't be afraid, you know, you can always work with something we call typography. So, uh, Typography is basically just playing with fonts, you know, like words and stuff. So you can see in the second video, right? We don't really have much drawing. Like, uh, I think this video, I'm not sure you can see my mouse, right? So uh, you can see, right, that it's just like mainly words that plays a big role, you know, like trying to tell the story with words, that kind of thing. Like you can just use that, right, to make it look aesthetic. At the same time, like you can still send a message across. So uh, typography is just another form of animation or what we call graphics, right? To, to be added on it into a video. Yeah, and uh, I think just now as uh, Nick mentioned like how we have like Instagram stories as well or like uh, Instagram videos. Is it Instagram videos? Yeah, it's Instagram videos, right? Um, IGTV, yeah. So like uh, we experimented with a few uh, concepts as well. You know, like nowadays, like uh, some people get triggered on like, why, why are we shooting in like, you know, like portrait? Why are we shooting like, like that? You know, like why, why must shoot like that one? Like I thought videos is like that one. You know, like I can tell you, right, that like, media is moving forward, you know, as much as you want videos to be in landscape, right, people will continue to shoot in portrait, people are going to watch their videos in portrait, you know, when they see your message, right, when the first thing that, that you scroll through Instagram, right, you'll always be in portrait, sorry, I have a, sorry. yeah, so uh, the first thing they always see, right, is uh, in portrait, so like, uh, you know, like, media is evolving, you know, we need to move along with media, you know, we need to uh, adapt to the change and everything. So one of the change that we adapted to was to play with Instagram TV, uh, IGTV. And we, instead of like editing in 16 by nine, which is the landscape format, we edited in nine by 16. So we just flip it around. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, it turned out great. It worked great. I mean, it looks really good. Uh, background done by Nick as well. Uh, yeah. And like, you know, we just play along with the visuals, that kind of thing. As much as you think it's boring, right? Just add visuals, but what I can tell you is don't add too much. You know, the more you add, right, the more stuff the like will be on the screen. You'll be clouded, you'll be crowded, and then like you know, people will start to lose their focus from the message. So you know, like 
sometimes like less is better la. or what they call it less is more or something yeah so uh that's something to take note and uh the last screen on the side for animation is yes you can just have fun and play with it you know like uh i think nick was experimenting with like 8 bit creation and like and stuff and from experimenting i don't know how it end up into a like some masterpiece or something like she did it for years or something yeah but this is i think it's her first time playing with stuff like that so it, it, it blew our mind like we were not expecting like something like this yeah so like uh this is how like animation can impact like uh all the videos or like the videos we do so now moving on away from the animation aspect to just videos right uh which I'll be focusing a lot more today because I am the filmmaker. Yeah. So like these are a few videos that we actually uh, did recently. Uh, so a lot on music videos, uh, narrative videos, which I would say uh, I'll be focusing on two different kind of narrative videos today. So the first one will be testimony, uh, where we usually do, and the second one will be what we call test first, which is uh, where we we take a verse and we turn it into a video. And I'll explain a little bit more how I did it for the past videos later. Yeah, so as you can see uh, in these videos, these are done by uh, me and my, uh, my colleague, who is the other half of the filmmaking team. Yeah, and uh, you can see like, uh, we try to portray the look of the videos, right, as aesthetic as possible so that it can attract like the, the viewer's attention. Like, you know, like nowadays, like attention span is very short. So in order to increase the attention span, right, it's very important to like uh, shoot something good that looks good and shoot something that can attract attention and extend that, atten that attention, attention. Yes. So I'm going to move on to the stage, stages of production. So uh, in every video, right, we have three stages of production. I think this is very well known to like uh, everyone in general, but uh, let's say if you're not sure, right, the three stages of production would be the pre-production stage, the production stage, and the post-production stage. So uh, I will go in depth a little bit more in the next few slides. But first, right, uh, I get this question a lot. I want to answer for you guys. So like, you know, how can I think of ideas for my content? Yeah. So how can I think, uh, like, how, how do I do it myself, right? It's basically, right, I watch YouTube videos. I, I follow creative accounts on Instagram. You know, like, they are, uh, okay, if you guys are not sure, right, there are Facebook uh, groups, right, where it's solely focused on church content. So, like, uh, we have, like, groups from uh, all the way, all the way from, like, uh, United States or Australia itself, right, they are sharing, like, what kind of contents their church are doing. So, like, what I do is I try to absorb as much content from them and I try to, you know, like, localize it into a Singapore, like, type style of video where locals will understand, like, where you, Lo local use or like local young adults will understand so it's really cool to just go join this group follow all these accounts subscribe them on youtube and i think like they will really like help you right like uh, visualize and help you expand your ideas yeah but because like a lot of us like we want original ideas like i can tell you right as much as original ideas are amazing right not all ideas are original you know it's really okay right to copy and recreate you know like uh, I'm pretty sure like, you know, like you watch movies in the cinema, right? Let's say, uh, I don't know, like Avengers. Okay, you see that Avengers is like, like top blowing their, their, their camera skills and everything, their ideas. They're, they're all amazing, but I can tell you those ideas are not original. They're adapted from a comic. They are adapt the, the camera skills, they're adapted from another movie, uh, another action movie. Like it's because of all the past movies, right? That, uh, that has done it, right? That's why Avengers, right? Uh, is like amazing and great today. So like in our context, it's like, uh, you know, just look at uh, Christian movies or like uh, other kind of movies, you know, adapt it, combine it, and then like make it yours. Yeah, so this is what I would do and I'll try my best. Lah. Yeah, so, uh, okay, moving on, right? I'm going to focus on two kinds of videos today. So uh, I'm going to share, yeah. So the first video, right, is a testimony-based video. So uh, particularly this video, uh, which is, what we titled Harmony, uh, who is also like uh, the youngest uh, funeral director. And it's also my very first project, full-time interns. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hilarious because my, it's a funeral director. So my first project, I actually have to go down and like to the funeral parlor to shoot and then like to actually go and observe like the bodies and kind of stuff. 
And this is what it's like to really be a filmmaker, to really go down the place and like really, yeah, wreck the spot and like really understand what the job is. Yeah, you know, filmmakers, we, we don't just shoot videos. We need, there's, there's a lot more to that. Yeah. And then the next video that I'm going to focus on as well is another narrative, which is Thirst Verse, as I mentioned just now. So it's a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be voiceovers. It's going to be like a lot of visuals, what we call B-rolls. And uh, yeah, it's basically a lot of typography and like playing with a little bit of effects. So to the first stage of pre-production, right, it is uh, these few things that you need to take note. So pre-production, right, is the most important stage of all three stages. Okay, we have pre-production, we have production, and we have post-production, right? So without pre-production, right, post-production and production is impossible. I mean, you can still shoot, you can still edit, but I can tell you a story, right? No one will, under, no one will really understand because you never really plan your story. You never really like, um, like think through of how you want your audience to receive the story. So it's really, really important. So uh, just to highlight a few things like uh, here. So we have scripting, we have storyboarding, we have mood boarding, we have location scouting, and we have art direction. Okay, so before you think of all these, right, the few things that you need to think of is basically your target audience. So you need to know, right, who are you targeting? Are you targeting young people? You know, as, as Nick mentioned, right, like uh, a 12 year old will receive digital content differently from a 25 years old. So you need to think if, let's say your target audience is a 12 year old or let's say a, a secondary school a student, you know, you want to like go in something more trendy. You want to go in something more uh, hype, you know, like uh, maybe a TikTok content that kind of thing, style based video so like you want to think of all these right so that it will actually really help you right plan your story better and it will actually like uh give you a better path to like planning your mood board your, your where your location can be and how your art direction will look like okay so uh other than that right uh, i'm just gonna go next to focus on like how i actually plan uh the pre-production stage for harmony's video which is the testimony kind of video so uh Okay, so in this concept, uh, I think a lot of you will be very lost right now. Uh, hopefully, you all can see in the screen. Uh, I, I know some of you are very lost. What is Zoom 003? What is 157 slash 3 minutes? Okay, these are all the time codes, right, to the videos. And on the right side, right, all the text, right, is basically whatever, uh, how many shared in the interview. So let me explain to what the highlights are and like what all these random things are, okay? So in every concept, right, uh, when it comes to testimony interviews, it's actually something where you can only plan 50-50. Uh, so before you go for every interview, right, it is very important to have a pre-interview weeks before the actual day of filming. Why? It's so that you can actually plan better. It is so that you can actually, right, like understand her story better so you can, you know, plan the visuals and you can plan the B-rolls, you know, you can direct her better to how to reenact that moment. So for Harmony, right, once we get a better idea, uh, we kind of like roughly know her story. So we get in advance, right, uh, can foresee like what kind of text or what kind of like part of, parts of her sharing that we want to remove and what we want to add on. So we can remind her and we can let, let, her, let her know as well. So right, uh, let me just go through for example. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse. You can see my mouse, right, moving. Yes, great. Okay, so right, uh, as you can see in Zoom 003, this is basically just the file uh, name of the, the audio recorder. So uh, in terms of the whole recording, right, Harmony will uh, directly share her testimony through our recordings and uh, through like our uh, setups and everything. I'll show you the setups uh, layout later. I actually drew something out. Uh, but in terms of this, right, uh, so basically 1 minute 57 seconds to 3 minutes is the part that we want uh, in that part of the recording. So it, it's like something that we signify to tell the, uh, the editor, right? That, you know, we want to cut this out. We want to cut this out uh, so that we can use it in the video. So uh, we cut out from 1 minute, 57 seconds to 3 minutes. So uh, in that 1 minute to 57 seconds to 3 minutes, right? There are the gray highlights. So the gray highlights are parts that we want to remove. Okay. And the orange highlight, right? Are the parts where we want to add visuals. Let's say, uh, cause phone call. Uh, so I have to remember to record something related to a phone call. So I'll write that down. 
that kind of stuff. Then uh, we have, so it could be a hospital or it could be a home at our helpline. So this part, right, where it mentions hospital or it could be a home, right? You know, maybe we can shoot in a hospital if possible. Or maybe we can shoot in a home. Or like uh, a place where that person lies, uh, it says over here with family members to arrange for the funeral. So these are a few minor details that's really important, right? That will help you visually to send a message to your, uh, to your, to your audience, uh, Okay, and I, I, I just wanna like uh, push a point, right? That, like you know, uh, as much as the interview is good, the interview, the the message of the story is important, right? Like it's also very important to take like uh, cutaways, which is the what I call B rolls, right? Because uh, I I think it's it's quite boring if you actually sit down and watch someone talk for 15, 10 to fifteen minutes, and you, all you see is her face. Like I don't think you want that, you know, like you just you you should like take cutaways. You can ask her to reenact, or you can shoot objects that signifies whatever she's talking about. Yeah, just in case like let's say uh, some people are really camera shy, so you will waste a lot of time trying to get them to actually reenact. So uh, yeah, you can use object as an alternative. Yeah, so moving on next, uh, which is also uh, third verse. Okay, so this is how I actually plan for third verse. It's actually quite cool. So uh, we use uh, one of the verse in uh, Matthew for our recent video. And uh, I enjoy doing third verse because it's when I really get to be creative. So what third verse is, right, is if you're not sure, go check it out on our YouTube channel. Uh, like, uh, it's actually just a 60 second videos that we, you know, we post on most of our social medias. Yeah, so third verse is when we take our, uh, a Bible verse that speaks to us, like, on this season. And last season was, uh, I mean, it's COVID. So, and we are moving out of, like, uh, circuit breaker already. So, we wanted something about breaking free, you know, about not worrying about what's coming next, but, like, really lifting to God. So, uh, yeah, we got one of the verse in Matthew. And, you know, uh, just look at me, look with me, right, at this, like, template. So, what does it mean? You know, uh, you see, like, uh, three boxes and a picture, that kind of stuff. So, let me explain to you. So, uh, on the left, right, is the raw verse. So, uh, we picked this verse from, uh, I think it's a, is it NLT version? I think it's NLT version. So, yeah, so it's, you can see, right, like, uh, to some people, to newer Christians and to non-believers, or like, I don't know, like, sometimes, like, even for me, right, I don't understand certain verses. So we actually have to translate the verse, right, to, to what I actually call actual English, uh, like something I actually understand. So we have, uh, over here, it says, for the pagans runs after all these things, right? Like sometimes you really think like, what does it actually mean? You don't really understand. So I would actually like uh, get a few of us, you know, we really sit down and translate it together. And what we got was, you know, for the world runs after these things. You know, like it could be as simple as that. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated as long as it really like uh, translate like what you think like, okay? Like uh, you can take note that like everyone translates it differently. Everyone has a different idea of uh, different perspective of each verse. So like, you know, like you just really want to share um, with your, I don't know, your teammates or your crew members or like the editors, the producers together and discuss, you know, if this verse actually would speak better to other people. So, we translated it to for the world runs after these things. And now my my uh my what is it my role as an editor, my role as a cinematographer, right? Is to visualize it. What is the first thing I think of uh when I you know I when, when I read this? And obviously I'll think of something running, someone running. So the for the world run after this thing. So for the world means to me, right, is basically nature, like Singapore. We are, we are limited to Singapore right now. So in Singapore. So I'm running in Singapore. Okay. So, uh, and definitely there'll be a person running. So the first thing I remember is me watching this movie. It's a war movie. I can't really remember what movie is this. Yeah, but it's a, I think it's, it's that one short movie. I think it's 1917. Yes, 1917. So there's a scene about uh, where, with this guy running in a scene. So like, yeah, uh, on a side note, it's really good to watch movies. Uh, and YouTube videos, yeah, just keep watching, you know, you never know, like, when you actually think of that scene, and you, when you actually use that scene, yeah, so, the first thing I'll think of is that scene, and I'll try to search that scene up, so, uh, there's this website called Shot Deck, I will put a link inside here, I'm not sure if it's open to everyone yet, but basically, it's, uh, uh, how, like, 
people get like concept video uh, pictures and like they will use it for their storyboarding and kind of stuff. But I'll, I'll try to put a link so hopefully it's open to everyone because right now they are still in a private stage of development. Yeah, so uh, that is just one example of how you can actually, uh, you know, convert, like translate a verse into visuals. And uh, just another example uh, will be like, therefore do not worry about tomorrow. And then we translate into, so don't worry about what tomorrow will bring. And uh, then we have that. That's why I, that's the first thing I visualize, you know, like a sunset, someone standing there, you know, like just, I don't know, it could be just thanking God. It could just be like, you know, like being so assured and lifting, letting it go and letting, letting God, right, you know, like take control. Yeah. So that's, that's the first thing I would think of. Yeah. So uh, the next one would be uh, what I call a short list. Uh, it's, it's very important. But I would say don't be too tied up on a short list. Okay, a short list is good to plan so that uh, you know you can like better understand during the shoot itself. You know, you you know what to shoot next. You you don't waste a lot of time. But don't be tied to your short list because at the end of the day, right, the shot may not work out. So if it does not work out, right, you don't have to force yourself to actually use that shot. You can on the spot itself. You can figure something out. You can shoot something else. Yeah, you can be creative. Yeah, so the, like I, I met a lot of people like where they are, we must follow this, we must follow this uh, because it says this, we plan already. If we don't follow this, everything else will be messy and everything will be mixed up. No, it won't. Uh, as long as you understand your story, as long as you uh, know what's going on, right? Like uh, it's okay, right? To actually like just be creative on the spot, improvise and take a better shot, a better shot than where you actually plan. Because sometimes, right? We can't really like, let's say, what if the like, why we can't get a baby or a fake baby in this in this part? You no, know, we need to think of something else. We need to be creative. We need to think of another shot, another angle that can maybe like help uh represent the story better. Yeah, so this is something that I will take note. Okay, so moving on quickly, uh, we have production. This is my favorite part of everything because I get to play with my cameras, I get to play with my lights, uh, I get to actually be on set, and I get to be uh. I don't know, let's say wherever the whoever we are interviewing. La. So let's say uh this is how many uh video, right? Uh this is how I would set up the interview. Yes. Okay, it's a little bit confusing. So uh because I actually drew this up last minute. So uh let me explain, okay? So over here we have the interviewee. Okay, imagine with me you're on a set in a box of emptiness, okay? So this is how I will set up my cameras and best, right? If you can get two cameras, uh, that'll be amazing. But one camera is fine. But let's say if you have one camera, where do you put the camera, right? Right in front of your interviewee. You can have two options. Like you can either put in front, which is cam one, or on the left side, which is on her, the right side of his or her face. So we have uh, cam two over here. Then, uh, we need your interviewer, right, to sit beside the camera so that uh, he or she doesn't like, uh, as in the interview, does not look into the camera because you don't want you don't want it to be very awkward where like it's it's just really awkward when like someone looks into the eye like into the camera and then like the viewers are looking back at that person like as much as it's like it's interacting that person is actually telling you a story not can kind of, not really speaking to you. So uh, keep that in mind, you know, as much as you can try to get a person to look away from the camera, which is looking into the interviewer like they are having a conversation. Yeah. So uh, this, this is actually a really good like template that I would use for most of the interviews we should interest. Uh. Yeah. Then, uh, yes. So this is another big question that I get all the time. What do we need to start? Uh, actually, you don't really need much. Uh, Okay, so like personally for myself, I actually started uh, when I was 17 years old. So I shot, right, I'm still in my mid-20s, like, like early 20s, right? So like, um, I shot with my phone at the start. I, I did a documentary with my phone, like as a 17-year-old kid. Yeah, and uh, it's very possible, especially, right, like with the capabilities of our, our phones today, right? You can do so much more, right? like you can actually shoot a movie with this. Apple actually shot a short film with an iPhone. Yeah, and like uh, you can actually like uh, edit everything on this phone as well. Yes, Apple edited everything on an iPhone as well. Yeah, so you can do everything on this one phone. But of course, best right if you can get a camera. Like uh, like I think first we started out with a very low end camera, and slowly we felt like there was a need to uh invest into something better, which is uh, this. 
I mean, I can't really like, sh- like most of the time when I do workshops, I try to uh, get up close and personal to show you guys the equipment, but this is the best I can do right now. So uh, whatever you're seeing on my webcam right, is actually shot with this camera right now. So this is actually my webcam right now. Okay, so like it makes a lot of difference in terms of quality. You know, there's this blurry background which everyone likes. Uh, there's, there's, it, it makes the lights look nicer from behind. Yeah, the lights are very important as well. Yeah, so I, if I can, like, let's say you're in a church, uh, you're a pastor thinking of, uh, or leader thinking of like investing in the media industry, I say go for it, you know. Uh, don't give all the money, but you know, like think carefully of what you need first. You know, like uh, like the quality expect. Uh, don't worry about the quality expect. Actually, like just think of like something that's suitable for uh your members that they can use. You know, like you you'll make a whole lot of difference. And like eventually, as people upgrade, uh, yeah, the quality, the standard of filmmaking, the standard of stories, right, will just change. Like I can't really like explain to you, like uh, how much difference you'll make until you actually like see it yourself lah, when you actually like invest it yourself. Yeah, but uh, I think in terms of what to invest, uh, probably I'll, if you guys have that question in mind, uh, I'll leave it for Q&A and hopefully answer it later. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, same thing for computer editing. Uh, you don't really need a computer to edit. You can use your iPhone, your iPad, or let's say if you have a computer, great. Yeah, I think that'd be amazing. Uh, okay, then also, right, I'm gonna skip this because I yeah rolls. Uh, so how many people do you need right? Like, uh, on set right now on Thurs right in Thurs right we only have three people and max on set. Uh, we are trying to like get more people involved like hopefully turn into a full scale production. But at the start right, uh, we shot with most of the time one person, one to two person, and then like slowly we, we try to add add, add people more in and kind of stuff. So like let's say you are like. You feel alone right now, right? Don't don't be afraid. You're not alone. Uh, I mean, like God, God is by your side. But also, right, like uh, you know, like just know that like whatever you are doing, right, whatever story you're sharing, right, it's gonna impact right lots of people. It's gonna impact lots of life. You one person can make like, like I don't know, a whole difference, right, to to lives. Uh. so like you know, keep that in mind, like. Just think of like, uh, like how to say, be positive about like expanding your team. Be, be, be the, like, how I say it? I would say that like uh, you are right, the first step right to having a full, like a three-man crew. Because if you don't start right, who's going to start? You know, like if nobody's going to start, then nobody's going to start already. Yeah, so if I don't like start right, like I cannot inspire the next filmmaker to work with me. You know, I need to show them like results. I need to show my leaders results. I need to show my pastors results so that they can invest in me. So I... I recommend like you not you may not be the best at filmmaking, but just give your best at it. You know, like just tell your stories the best. Yeah, that's 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 very important. Yeah. So uh yeah, I already told you what what I actually need for equipment and kind of things. So two cameras is fine. Uh okay, but the most important other than visuals, right? Your everyone needs to take note is your audio. Because if I can't hear your interviewee properly, then it kind of defeats the point of the whole testimony because you can't really hear his or her story. So Audio investment is really, really important. Uh, I don't, like, it doesn't matter whether it's professional or like a starter kit or something. As long as uh, we can hear, like, uh, I don't know, like the person, yeah, it's really important. So one example would be, I'm actually using a wireless recorder to talk on Zoom right now. So the good thing about wireless recording is that you can definitely go very far and like, you're not limited to a wire other than disconnected to, to my body right now. Lah. So, uh, what I would do is invest, the first item would be to invest in a wireless recorder. Uh, it's not the cheapest per se, but uh, it's, you can, it can last you like, this thing can last us like, I don't know what, three, three, three years already. Yeah, so it's, it's really amazing. Okay, uh, then next right will be going on to the post-production stage. Uh, I'm just going to run through very quickly on this uh, because we don't really have much time, uh, which is, what software can I use? So these are three software that I would highly recommend uh, anybody and everyone. Uh, there is no competition, there is no which one is better, there is no, uh, yeah, the only thing that is a difference is free subscription and first time payment, and one time payment, okay? Uh, so let me explain a little. So DaVinci Resolve is uh, uh, very well known, very professionally used in the industry. The best thing about it is free, okay? You, you won't unlock every feature, but 
all the feature you ever need, right, is free of charge. So as a beginner, as a starter, I would recommend DaVinci Resolve. Uh, but one issue is that uh, it's not really user-friendly. I would say it's not very user-friendly. Like, uh, it takes a while to understand what button is what, that kind of thing. But it's free. There's no harm. You know, give it a shot. Like, if you don't like it, then maybe invest in something you can, uh, where you need to pay, like the Adobe Ecosystem Subscription, which Tus is using. And why we use the Adobe Ecosystem Subscription, right, is because uh, as you subscribe to a certain package, uh, there are student package, there is a workplace package, creative package, all kind of package. Uh, as we subscribe, we are given access to a lot of softwares. And uh, let's say uh, we edit with Premiere Pro and uh, we need Nick to do animations. So she has Adobe After Effects, right? And through Adobe After Effects, uh, she can do her effects, that kind of thing, and actually easily transfer everything straight into Premiere Pro without hassle. We just need her to send her the files. Send us the files so we can edit it on our own time. Or like, if we need to make any changes, right? We can just do it on the spot. We don't have to go to a computer and then like wait for it to start up, then edit it, and then like think of it again, and then edit it again, and then wait for it to export, and then transfer. But the good thing about Adobe ecosystem is you can just edit straight into the software that you're actually using yourself. Yeah. So, uh, and the last one is uh, Final Cut Pro X. Yeah, it's a one-time payment thing, but only for Mac OS users. So, uh, if I mean, if you're an Apple boy or Apple girl, uh, Apple fan, you know, this would be the way. I mean, uh, yeah, it would be the way. Lah. Usually, most of the time, like nowadays, they give it for free. I don't, I, I'm not very sure. But uh, if you have it, great, use it. You know, like, it's, re it's really good. Like, nowadays, the software for Final Cut Pro is, it gets better. Lah. Yeah. So, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Ecosystem and Final Cut, right, they all have it on Mac, the, the Mac OS. But uh, only Final Cut is available on the Mac OS alone. It's not available on PC. DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Ecosystem is available on PC and Linux. I don't know who uses Linux, but yeah. So, these are what's available. So I'm just gonna go straight into the process of post-production. Okay, so uh, in post-production, we have a few things to take note. So we have cutting, color grading, sound mixing, and graphic. So in terms of cutting, cutting is really important for the first few drafts because you wanna cut the stories together and like uh, really show your directors and show your clients whether if the story will work. Because if the story doesn't work, you cannot move on to color grading, you cannot really move on to sound mixing, you cannot really move on to the graphics as well. So uh, once the cutting is done, the draft is done, the story is all settled, you can move on to color grading, you can move on to sound mixing, you can move on to subtitles. And uh, once all that is done, then you move on to the graphics. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how messy a timeline can look like. Uh, look, look like uh. So this is the full testimony video of uh, Harmony's uh, video. Okay, like uh, it looks very messy. It looks like there's stuff everywhere, but I can tell you, right, this is as neat as it, as it gets. Uh. Yeah, this is the neatest you can go. Okay, so let me explain to you what is what, okay? So how do I label, right? Labeling is the most important thing in video editing. Why, right? It's because let's say you have a second man to edit. You have an editor, uh, of, like one day you take MC and then you really can't edit, but you have a deadline and you need your partner to edit. So, uh. That's when my uh, second half of the, of the team, uh, wait, his name is Wei Ming. Uh, let's say I think MC and Wei Ming like, is only on work. Like, he's in the office. Like, he can actually help me edit uh, by having my files. And then like, uh, he will know what is what. So as you can see, the, I think this is like what? Sand, sandstone color. Beige. I think it's beige. Is it beige? Yeah, I don't know. This color, right? Okay. It's uh, actually the main interview. So. Weiming now Weiming knows that this is the main interview, so he knows you know what to move and like what is what lah. yeah. And uh, the green color, the dark green forest green, is the subtitles. So knowing that the subtitles right are in line with the actual footage, he now knows that he needs to move the subtitles and the actual footage together so that it does not go out of sync, yeah. And you can see below, uh, a lighter green which is the background music together with the purple one. The purple one is uh, what it means, it's, it's a little mixed. So a uh, little bit of like sound mixing in it, uh, editing, that kind of stuff. So now we know that we have uh, all this, right? He knows that, oh, this is sound. Okay, maybe I can make a few changes in terms of sound. Yeah, so 
it's pretty straightforward. Like now he knows what is in place. And you can see the light blue options at the top. This is the cutaways. So now he knows it's the cutaways. Uh, because he knows these are the cutaways, right? He can focus in this part where it's empty. And if he feels very empty, right? He has the decision to actually add in more cutaways. You know, uh, what I call B-rolls. Uh. Yeah, so these are little things that can actually help the production and can actually help uh, in terms of teamwork. Because, yeah, it's, it's just really important to plan out. Uh, I'm going to show you another example uh, of what I call messy. So, uh, this is a mistake I made uh, in the previous video. I actually was rushing a few videos, so I did not like uh, actually label anything and it got really messy. So, you can see like, one layer, right, has this random, like, one random video. It's, it's just a waste of space, I would say. Like, uh, let's say if you have a small screen, right, it will affect your editing a lot because everything will just be so cramped and you're just, like, confused and lost. So, I have so many green color here. You know, uh, this is the background music. I know green is background music, but there are so many other green. So, these are actually sound effects, but I don't know what sound effects they are because everything is labeled the same. So, it's, uh, that's, that's one issue I had. Okay, so... The scenario is that like, uh, I had to put this project down for like, let's say a week because uh, we had to focus on our project. And when I came back to this video, right, I got so lost because I forget like, oh, this layer is what? What video is this? Uh, what sound effects did I put? Uh, and I realized like, oh, shucks, I should have like actually like labeled, uh, you know, my work and kind of stuff. So uh, these are a few things that I would uh, take note in editing and uh, yeah, so if you have any questions uh, regarding anything, yeah, you can just like ask me later on like, and stuff. And uh, I think, yeah, really the last part about post-production is coloring. Uh, this is something that a lot of people seem like see as unnecessary, but I see as very necessary. It's why is because uh, color grading, right, it carries the weight of your videos a lot as well. You know, as you can see right before, this is something that uh, like we, in the past, we don't really color. So let's say if you don't color, right, and you shoot something that is very gray out, okay, like, it's nice, lah, but you can actually make it better, you know. So what we did was we color graded. We actually, like, learned how to color grade ourselves, uh, and this was what we got. Like, you know, we, we actually made it look with more contrast. We added, like, uh, more highlights. Uh, yeah, we added more color, more saturation, so that it's not as bland as... Uh, like, I don't know, like this, this picture itself. Lah. So, take note that coloring is really important. Like, okay, it's going to be confusing at the start because there's going to be a lot of bars. It's going to be a lot of, like, what's this, what's that, right? But uh, that's why, like, I would say a uh, resource in YouTube is really, really important. I don't have a recommended resource, uh, like a recommended YouTuber because there's, there's just too many. You know, like, there's, like, you search, right, uh, how to color grade in Premiere Pro, right? The first video you click, right, it's good enough already. That's how good like the resources are nowadays. You don't act, you don't have to pay. You don't have, you don't really have to like subscribe to anything. You just use YouTube is free of charge. So you know like in your own time, go search it up. Uh, follow step by step. It's all it's all possible. Yeah. So uh, moving on next, what do I do after I'm done with the video? Uh, yeah, you upload. Basically, you upload. Okay, where do you upload? Uh, we in terms upload in YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, we upload to TikTok as well. Um, yeah, we actually get views in TikTok. Right? I'm quite amazed. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So as much I like, I don't know like whatever like uh social media platform you use, right? Just upload it there. If you feel that it's gonna speak to the audience over there, right? Upload it there. If you feel that uh, youths are using this more, uh, this platform more, right? Upload it there because first of all, you can duplicate as much like, as many videos as you want. You don't have to actually print it on CD and send to a company. You know. And like, second of all, like, you know, your videos can speak to, I don't know, like a hundred or a thousand people, right? In that platform and you never know, someone might get saved through that video. So it's like, I would right, take as many opportunities as I can to actually just like, like send that video in. Lah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just one last point is like, uh, I would tell like all the creatives, all the video filmmakers who are feeling very tired, that kind of stuff that like uh, my contents are very mundane and kind of thing. I would encourage them that, you know, like they are the bridge, right? Uh, to like, they are the bridge to all the non-Christians. They are the bridge to like all the non-believers, you know, as a creative. Like you can connect that bridge through a video. You can connect that bridge through a photo and you can connect that bridge through like uh, animations, that kind of thing. 
yeah, so uh, I think that's all for my sharing. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna, I think we're going to move on to Q&A right now, right? How do we do this? Yes. Uh, thanks, Nico and Marcus. Wow, I learned so much from the session itself. Um, we kind of have overrun a beat. It's almost 12 p.m. But both of them have shared so much and so good. I learned really a lot, like the detail, like really how to do and really give us so much handle to know what we can do uh, when we plan video and also for the media itself. So thank you, Nico and Marcus. Thank you so yeah. much. And Nikos have, has been faithfully replying the different questions. And uh, I just want to say, feel free to leave if you need to go prepare lunch, go to vote. But for those who want to still interact with Nicole and Marcus, please stay around. You can interact with them and ask them questions like, Marcus, how do you do that? The timeline, what does it mean? You know, like the different things. So thank you everyone for joining us. So feel free to stay around to ask both of them questions. So Jerome asked a question. Timothy asked a question on the copyright. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Nicole or Marcus would like to answer them. Uh, Jerome asked a question. At this time where collaboration and video shooting is difficult, what type of video can we create and how? I uh yes, so uh actually that was one of the problems we faced during circuit breakers. And uh I realized like that's when we actually have to really be creative. So uh, one thing I did was, uh, at first for short, like shoot at home. Uh, I actually crafted a story with my sister who is actually like uh, a non-believer and we actually created a Christian content with it. Yeah, so like, uh, you know, for in my case, like, I just, I, I had a camera at home. I had no other equipment and uh, uh, I tried to make a story that can actually speak to people uh, in my home place. But now with phase two, uh, you're actually like, uh, you, you can actually like go out and shoot um, as long as there's like five people or lesser. Yeah, so uh, take that to your advantage if you can. But of course, uh, when it comes to, let's say you have to collab collaborate with an actual company or a place or a church, let's say, right? Uh, you actually have to follow uh, the government regulations, which is to register uh, what they call your business class to be allowed to actually film because uh, it's actually very real that uh, the the Singapore authorities, they actually survey the area a lot. So uh, one of the shoot that I had uh, recently, right, uh, people like the, the people, they, they, it's as if they know, but they, they randomly pop out. Right? So I, I would say uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry or so. Yeah, so uh, those are some things that uh, you should take note. Lah. Yeah, I hope I answer your question. Hmm. Thanks. And Timothy also asked a question. Is there a place of copyright in resources? Nicole, do you have an answer? I, I think it's yes, right? There's a place of copyright. Oh yeah, I think for that, um uh I don't like I think like if it's on a stock image website, right? There should be no problem with copyright unless like you know it indicates that you need to pay. But then, like, you know, if you grab it from, let's say, someone's Facebook or, like, you know, on Google Images, then you have to, then you have to, like, you know, do a bit more research and check whether that image is copyrighted. Yeah. But, yeah, if, you, if, if, if it's from those stock um, websites like Unsplash, then, like, then it's more or less free. Yeah. True. Nice. I hope that answers it. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, I'm going to answer uh, the equipment lowbank. <laughs> Okay, so like uh, for people that really want to get like cheap equipments in Singapore, right? I can tell you the best place to go right now is Funan, Funan, Peninsula, and the more opposite Peninsula, Peninsula, yeah, Peninsula, Peninsula, yeah. Peninsula Plaza. <laughs> yes, yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> so uh, okay, I'm gonna like uh, I'm gonna type down a few stores in the chat uh for your reference to which store that you can actually visit uh that provides good customer service and a good price in Singapore. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll help you answer that question. Lah. Yeah, and then um, who else is next? Uh, what's the next question? Oh, Nicole, you want to answer EC choke question? 
about oh, the bigger uh, problem. So, sorry? Yeah. Uh, in your experience. Oh, is it the in your experience? Right. Okay, in your experience, what was the biggest challenge in perspective of a media content creator? How do you overcome it? Hmm. Let me think about this. Okay, I would say um the biggest challenge right, is like you know when when you are just starting out and like you know when people don't really know you or your brand or your content yet, but then I think um as I think as long as you just persevere and that you know you just get over the first stage of like uh like you know that there's there, there's this upward climb kind of thing. So like once you um consistently keep posting, consistently keep you know updating your sites like. And uh, I think naturally people will just, you know, start to notice it, that you have an online presence. And um, but secondly, I think we cannot avoid, like, you know, the Holy Spirit as well. You know, like, the, like God, is, there's always this element of God in our work. And, um, you know, so it's really up to the Holy Spirit. Like, you know, how much, how big was this going to grow? How, like, how many people are these going to reach? And let's say, um, I think for the example, but uh, like to create your artwork with the message, behind it for I think for that right like a lot of us like I think uh, we have to be very sensitive to the spirit la, like the Holy Spirit too. for example we ask um, God like you know God like what kind of uh, image would um, be more, more suitable for this article and what kind of image would be more uh, suitable for this social media post like you know what kind of text you want to use what kind of um, emotions you want to convey so like I think yeah that that is I, I would say that would be the main difference between like a Christian visual than just a normal pretty visual. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. And uh, I think I could also, for the one, for the question underneath that, like about Christian music and, for Christian music and songs, like uh, I'm guessing that's in relation to the copy, right? Yeah. yeah um, I think for that, we, yeah, we do try to avoid um, using uh, like copyrighted, um, like, you know, for example, so Hillsong, you know, Hillsong stuff, like their yeah, music videos. I mean, yeah, Hillsong music videos are like their yeah, songs in our videos because like definitely, like, you know, they, they have put time and effort into it. So, you know, we don't just want to read them, read, read uh, that lah. Uh, but you can also go to a lot of, uh, free music sources like artlist.io.com artlist.io yeah Nico, I think you broke up a little bit just now oh, oh sorry uh, was that at the part um, at the copyright the music copyright or something oh I think when you're trying to spell the artlist just now you broke out a little oh <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I I included it in the chat so you guys can see like their website. So that's a really good place for you to get like a music, but you do have to pay somewhat of a subscription fee. Yeah, but there are also a lot of free music websites lah. But I would say like if you really want to use like you know like let's say Hillsong for your youth ministry video, I think as long as it's used internally like you know within your a church grounds like and not and you're not using it to monetize something i think it's fine yeah mm. yeah I think we okay can i hope that answers the question we can mm. answer a few more we can we'll answer until about 12 10 nah. i know everyone has a lot of questions so another <laughs> six more minutes we'll answer as much as possible so the next question i think is to marcus by angela Involving videos, like if you accidentally shoot a photos or video in portrait, can you redeem it? Because you're unable to go back to retake the photo. Uh, so there's actually a few ways to re redeem it. Uh, one of it is to incorp like to work together with your graphic designer. Uh, I would say like let's say uh if you shoot it in portrait, right, which is the rectangular straight one, um, sometimes you have the black bars and it's on the side, and you want it in landscape, right? And once you have it in landscape, you put that video in the middle, it's just black bars. So what do we do with that negative space, right? Is we get our uh, graphic designer to help us fill that space with uh, their creative ideas, you know, like you could put a background, you could uh, fit in a template that can actually like make, like, uh, how to say, like, to, you you complement that that uh, portrait mode. Lah. Yeah, in, that's, that's uh, the best I would recommend. 
but let's say if you don't have any uh you can you can just put a background uh, but uh, let's say if you don't want to put a background uh the at most the only thing you can do is actually scale up to like uh i don't know 200 300 percent which will make like your person like super big yeah yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't encourage that but like if you want to feel the screen that's the only way to feel the screen yeah so uh i mean as much as technology has improved nowadays right we are still very limited to what we can do uh, yeah mm. Mm. oh jane has a question my church has a huge age range for youth category 17 to 28 years old it's kind of difficult to adjust with this huge range any kind of suggestion how should they deal with it mm. I think like every church has a different way to deal with it. Uh, I think Nicole has like her own view on it. My view is basically uh, like because I lead a I lead a ministry of uh, like a ministry ministry we call Creative Scott in uh, my church, and uh, they are they are range from uh, basically they are range from twelve years old, you know, not twelve years old, uh, fourteen years old, all the way to 20, 28 years old. Yeah, so the, the range is wider. So like how we get them to work together is uh, for every group, right? We try to put in like, uh, how say, we try to group them as much as we can to their age group so that uh, first of all, they can relate because uh, it's, sometimes it's really hard to like, let's say uh, myself, right? Like to talk to people like that's a lot younger than me and why I say they don't understand sometimes. Yeah, so uh, sometimes you just want to group them together. And if you can, right, if you if you uh you sense that this person, let's say who is uh twenty five years old and uh can connect very well with you, sorry, uh put them together with the young people, you know, get him or her to inspire the young people along with them, right? And uh like uh you know, like just get them to work together. Lah. Uh if it doesn't work out, right, uh switch things around because I feel like this kind of things uh it works very differently with different people. Uh it works yeah, everyone is just different. Yeah, so like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, in my case, like I had to uh, work around uh, some people. We had to shuffle like three times uh, in order to get a, a good enough like uh, grouping. Uh. Yeah, so uh, I would suggest you try that out. Like uh, group them as much as you can. I, because I, I don't really know how many people you have in that age group. It's definitely uh, nine years gap is actually quite big. Uh, but I would recommend you put them in groups of five or six. Yeah, that would be a good number and uh, get them to work together, uh, try activities. Yeah, because sometimes we really need someone who is older to like inspire and to impact like the younger generation. Yeah, so that you know, like the younger generation are prepared for whatever the older person has experienced. Uh. Yeah, that's uh, what I would recommend. Yeah. Nicole, do you have anything for this? Um, I, I would say, uh, if like there's like a ve like this huge range, I, I would think it's actually like broken up into like the youth youths, like you know the lower like tertiary or lower, and then there's a the young adult range. So you could actually even have like a two like two um Instagram pages, but I'm not I'm not really sure like how like because perhaps your individual your churches have like ways you know to organize these groups of people. So like um, if possible, you could do like you know two uh. In two Instagram pages, one that's you know more geared towards the young adults and one geared towards the like tertiary and younger. But like you know, if like you have to do things as a whole, then I would say um, uh, that like you know, if you have to lump all of it together, then I would say um, have a mix. You know, have your your content like let it be like more more mixed. Um, in terms of like let's say. Uh, for example, testimonies, right? You could like put a younger person's testimony there. Then after later, maybe in the next year post, you post an older, like a, let's say a 20, a mid 20 ish years old person's testimony there. And like try to vary your, uh, because I think like, like even though the age range is still like this, this big, there are still some similar topics, like, you know, like let's say education, because like, you know, the uni age or like, you know, job transitions or, but so for example, like job transitions, drop transitions you could like talk about uh, you know future because like um you know your future or your calling because that is somewhat important to the younger people as well like you know um but yeah just try try to like um go for the more in between kind of topics like, i would say yeah yeah i think i have one question i mean to end mm -hmm. the session today like if there's one tip that both of you want to leave with uh whoever is hearing today what is one thing they can, one team, and what is one thing they can try? 
this one is. thing they can try. Mm. Like if they are not doing anything, <laughs> not posting anything, not doing any video, what is one? What is the first thing you think that they can try? Okay, okay. I think um yeah, I, do, I like. I hope this is not too intimidating. But right, I think the first, first, first thing you can do is ask God. Right, like you know, if you're really, if you feel like you know, your really, your calling is really into this like um thing to, if you really feel like God's called called you to start this ministry thing, you just ask God. Like you know. What do you want me to do? And just listen, just listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a good answer. Uh, okay, but like I think other than what Nick say, right? Uh, in terms of let's say, uh, because I'm speaking about videos, like uh, you don't know where to start. I can suggest to start by with yourself. You know, like uh, if you don't know, you don't know who to ask that kind of thing. Why don't you share your story, right? Like how you met God, how how you encounter God with people. You know, just all you have to do is like just put your camera right in front of you. And just share, you know, like start from there. And I think like from there, feedbacks and like, you know, people will come and talk about it. And I can tell you, right, 100% is okay to fail. You know, like from failing, right, you learn through mistakes. You know, you learn, you learn uh, how I can do better that kind of thing. So, you know, it's okay to fail, start with yourself. And yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you just like really go somewhere. Lah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Marcus and Nicole. Yes, I think all of us, let's try something. Putting our testimony, putting our video, uh, just try something to put it on our Facebook, Instagram. Uh, that's something that we can start with because it's our own life story that we can share or even something that you learn today from a Devo sharing also. Yeah. So I think that's a good starting point. So thank you everyone for joining us today.